Okay. Thanks. Anyway, well, welcome everybody. My name uh, is Derek Tapasca. I've been a member of NISA for 12 years, I guess, by now. Um, still on the membership committee, really have enjoyed this. And it's really been fun to, uh, with SVI to help promote these Sculpt Slams. Uh, if those of you do, may not know, it started with the inspiration from the International Sculpture Center, which particularly during uh, the COVID thing, I'm, they did almost every week. Uh, they called them Art Slams, maybe. We, we grabbed the name Sculpt Slam <coughs> and they were doing them. I was thought they're very helpful. And then particularly for us, since we had a lot of new members in this last 15 months or so, and this would be a particularly good way to have introduce, have new members introduce themselves to each other and 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 to us, because I've been, you know, in the in in you know here for 12 years, and they're out of 150 some members. I probably only really know um, 30 of them, something like that. So I think this is a great opportunity, and really, and we thank you for uh, taking part and sharing your sharing your work with us. So we have. Four sculptors today, Ro Osborne, Natasha Dikariva. Am I pronouncing that close enough? I was it just, okay, all right. Uh, Sabrina Fadile and Dominique Esposito. And first off um, is Ro Osborne. Now, uh, as we move along, uh, Svi will let you know when you've gone nine minutes. And so you've got about another minute to go and then We'll, uh, well, actually, maybe the drill is in this next slide. Um, yeah, come on now. There it is. Um, we have the four presenters, so we'll probably be fairly busy. 10 minutes makes 40, that minus 60 is 20. Anyway, we, we could have a chance for quick questions after each person's presentation, and then it probably at the end, we'll see if we have time left and then we could have questions for any anybody. So, um, so why don't we just begin? And um, with Ro, and Ro, just let me know, and then I'll advance the, uh, the slide, so. Okay, thanks, Derek. Okay, all right. There's Ro, and give us, you know, and you obviously feel free to tell us a bit about yourselves, and if you wish, before you begin. Uh, so, next sorry. slide, there you go. <laughs> um, I, this, is a, this is a shot of a periwinkle making its way across the sand. It's something I see almost every day in my walks by the beach near my house, and I take this as a metaphor for my life as an artist, I've, I've always been making my own path and sort of going, never, never coloring inside the lines. And um, I'm uh, really never want to follow the uh, tradi uh, traditional path. Um, Lori Muchos. Uh, next, next, Derek. Yep, okay, I'm trying, why is it? All right, whoops. That oh, one. Back. Uh, oh. sorry. Sorry. There we are. Now, oh, my God. no, no, next. Uh, yeah, that uh, that's a, that's the next one. But go ahead. Oh, well, Flat, let, back let, one. There we go. Yeah. Um, this is an example of what I did uh, in college. Um, and I I got into sculpture in college. Uh, I took an elective as a way to skip out of a of a uh, a language requirement course at a, a big, a fairly large university, but a very small art school. Um, and I ended up falling in love with doing carvings like this, um, did a bunch and um, had but had sort of a bad college experience and I, I quit making sculpture for a, for a number of years. Next, next slide. Um, in 1980, I did a, I, I took a course an advanced sculpture course at the University of Rhode Island, and I went from doing these very cerebral carvings to uh, doing um, uh, uh, constructions, the uh, con you know conceptual constructions. Um, I had in when I was in college, I had been influenced by I I had taken a course at the at the Hirschhorn in Washington D.C. and I sort of fell in love with a, a sculpture there that, that was a Kenneth Nelson piece called uh, Needle Tower, and in that piece he he did did this reduced um, dimension piece with lots of, of pipes and, and wire and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller but it, it, it creates an implied uh, an implied perspective and I sort of I sort of got into that whole whole idea of the reduced dimension thing in my in my sculpture. Uh, next slide. Um, I, I started working with glass and wood uh, back in the 80s and um, like with this piece, the, the whole reduced dimension thing, 
is it happens with the, the size of the notch in, in each of those boards determines the angle that the boards um, lean lean against the glass at. So those there's no glue, nothing at, nothing touches each other. It just is all in place by virtue of the of the um, the size of the notch in the glass. I did it on both sides, and then and then as it it looks like two people or two two figures walking past each other. So I called it the greeting. Next slide. Um, this one again, I got in, I was into doing the do, working with um, glass and wood, and with this one. I, I used the I just I, I used the glass in opposing uh, planes and I set the glass exactly the, the uh, it's it set apart it's at exactly the di diameter of the of the uh, sphere inside. So again, there's no glue or anything, but it's just the, the sphere is held in place just by just by uh, the friction of it being between the two sheets of glass. My pieces seem to, they seem to have, I was also, the same time I took that course at URI, I also began working as, as a, um, a home builder, a, a carpentry co contractor. And uh, so I was intrigued with all the, all the uh, mathematical formulas that are contained in these things. Uh, there, it's like a mathematical order, which, which, as it turns out, that's that's sort of why I became enamored of the of that Kenneth Nelson piece. But um, ever since then, my pieces have tended to have that same mathematical order. Next slide, please. Um, when I moved to the Cape, I started dealing with cylindrical geometry. Um, still. I still was dealing with this with, with the uh, mathematical order. Um, this is a piece that I, I installed at the Whitensville uh, exhibit last last fall. Um, with with these pieces, I with with the with the uh, cylindrical geometry, I I set up a, a jig where I could change the angle of the cut and the angle that the pipe was presented to the saw. At, at very specific increments, and and then I glued them, glued it all together, and and it became this, this uh, actually a pretty unpredictable uh, shapes, um, but but really interesting stuff. I um, did a bunch of bunch of things using different angles and different um, different configurations and different ratios. Um, this uh, again, this one's called Plumber's Pirouette. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is this is one that I did. Um, that is I, where I used, I actually used the, the fittings, uh, you know, factory fittings for the, to put, to put the PVC pipe together. Um, and as you can see, the, the, uh, the lengths of the pipes on either side, on one side, they get longer and longer and the other side, they get shorter and shorter. And then, then they stick down through the board. Uh, but this one, this particular one, I'm also a musician and the, um, everyone, everyone that sees it says, that it's got to it's got to make music. <laughs> and I, I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but I decided to call. I, I renamed this one uh, "Waiting for a Melody." Next yeah. slide, please. Um, in I I started getting frustrated with the whole idea of the, of this of these mathematical orders. So I said, "Well, what's what's pretty what's what's random?" Uh, it, and and I came up with like a bubble trail. If you throw if you throw a a, bo a boulder into the water, it creates a bubble trail. So I, I had a bunch of uh, PVC fittings and I just said, okay, I'm going to try to create a, basically a bubble trail with it. Well, as, as, as fate would have it, it became, a, it, it turned into one of those orders again. And I was like, okay. So I started exploring, I started doing a whole set of uh, bubbles pieces. Next slide, please. Um, this is a model for, for one that I did way, way, way back um, early on. Um, and I started, I, this was the first one that I actually did to try to wrap around the, 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 a, piece of, a, a piece of anything for a base rather than just sitting on top of a pedestal. Um, in this case, I, I had a, a, a nice little block of teak that I did and I cut the, 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 first, the first cylinder um, Cut a, a basically a forty five degree cut out of it and and was was able to was able to glue it to the to the the teak. Uh, next slide, please. Derek, oh there you. 
Um, so as I, as I was doing these, I said, okay, well, what happens? Sometimes, sometimes you throw a rock in the water and it doesn't make just a single stream. It makes it two streams. So I decided to, to try doing um, what I called the, the, a diversion, uh, the diversion pieces. And uh, so that I, when, when, after they, after they get up to a certain height, um, they they break into two into two separate um, uh, separate streams. So this is the first one I did, the first diversion piece that I did, uh, and um, I, then I I kept going after that. Uh, next next slide, please. Um, these are two full size uh, diversion pieces. The one on the right, um, I had I did it. It, it's made out of the, the um, PVC pipe fittings. I think the bottom piece is like 10 inch in diameter. And as it goes, as it goes up, it splits in. But you can see, if you follow the, the trail of the little, of the little pipes, it, it follows a, a pretty specific path, and, um, which I, that was exactly what I was trying to get away from. The, the one on the left is is even bigger. I started using uh, bigger uh, some bigger diameter pieces. And with that one, I actually, I don't know if you can see it, but in the farthest right cylinder, there is a, I, I incorporated a, um, a, a sphere into it. I, I, I really enjoy spheres and, and I want to get more of them into my work. Um, next slide, please. Oh, nine minutes, one minute. Okay. Go. All right. Uh, these are a couple, of, uh, uh, a couple more of, of the of the bubbles pieces. Um, note the one on the on the left or the right rather. It's it starts with a, a brick. Next slide, please. Um, I at the same time I was getting into uh, using HDPE drainage pipe and making big sculptures out of those. Um, next slide. These are a couple that I've that I've done. Um, that have been in and out of in and out of exhibits various places across New England. Uh, next slide, please. Um, when after the past year, I've been collecting on the beach. I've been collecting beach brick, uh, which gives a, a sense of time in the piece. They these bricks were manufactured originally, and then they were used in a structure, and then the structure was destroyed, and then they ended up on the beach, and then they got. They got. Uh, they all, each have this this linear time story. So um, I've been doing I've been doing these uh, pieces. So next slide, please. Um, here's a couple more, and finally getting away from totally away from any sort of mathematical order, and also finally painting them. Everybody's been pushing me to paint my pieces, and I think the next slide is the last one. Go ahead. Oh no, next. Go ahead and go ahead and skip to the skip to the last one, Derek. Uh, this one, Are this one. Pass, I, go back one. You mean? No, no. This is it. Okay. Uh, this this one I did for. Um, I I've never I've never really done any statement pieces, and I've never tried. To, I've tried to not get involved with pieces that that deal with uh, contemporary events or anything. But we just had an, an exhibit at at the cultural center where where I have my studio. And they had an exhibit called uh, that, that was dedicated to uh, Ukraine. So I in the in the uh, to, I pa I actually painted this one and and uh, redid it. It was an old sculpture that got uh, destroyed in a storm, and uh, I called it "Meanwhile on the Road to Mariupol." Uh, so this is the my the first probably <laughs> maybe the last statement piece that I've ever done. So mm -hmm. I think that pretty much covers my ten minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ro. Any quick questions so you don't forget, or can you write them down, or anybody, or you, you want to wait to the end? How are we doing for time? Any questions from anybody? I have one. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I love how clean is the connection between the pieces, the part of the sculptures. What do you use to attach when you, the, you use the PVC to the bubble sculptures? What, what, how you attach one piece to the other? Ah, uh, boy, that has been an evolution. When I first started, I, I tried to use PVC cement and, and it was not, it didn't happen fast enough and strong enough. So I, I mixed the PVC cement with colloidal silica, uh, which is a thickening agent, which helped. And then I went from there to using um, cyanoacrylate glue, uh, which, which, all, which is uh, 
worked pretty good, but it discolored the pieces. So I ended up having to, to like repaint them white. Uh, I am currently looking into doing thermal welding uh, for the for the pieces because because they are they, they don't glue into a fitting like PVC pipe is supposed to. It's just the the, the actual face of the, the the two pieces coming together. Uh, so it ha it's it's a pretty tenuous um, uh, gluing arrangement. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Um, just a, a quick comment. Uh, the you were saying people will tell you you should play them. They should be instruments. Um, <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree with that comment. There's a group somewhere in Africa. I don't know where called Fulu Miziki. F U L U. M-I-Z-I-K-I, -I, and they make amazing instruments out of all sorts of fun PVC stuff and they're performing and costumes, Ooh. Ooh, a I lot of fun. So um, I, I will, I will, uh, I'll, when I don't know, I don't have a pen handy right well, now. Otherwise, or we can put, if you could put that in the chat. Yeah, 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 um, I'll put that I, in the chat. Yeah, or, or I'll, I'll email you separately. Thanks, Sabrina. Yeah. Okay. okay, we better move on and we can come back as well. It's, uh, thanks, okay. Ro, thanks a lot. Uh, next up, uh, Natasha, and uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and, and show us your work. Yes, you can move to the next slide because it just has a, a title for my presentation. Yep. Okay, yep. Um, so um, my name is Natasha Dikareva. I was born and raised in Ukraine, and I also lived and studied in St. Petersburg, Russia. Today, I'm going to present my work from uh, the past 12 years. So we can move to the first slide. And uh, mm. about 12 years ago in 2010, I uh, felt like there are so much catastrophic events are going on in the world uh, that I would like to climb into the shell and just to see when it will be safe to come out. So first my shell dwellers were kind of pale and um, uh, then if you go to the next slide, you will see the, um, how their surfaces would change. Mm -hmm. Then I started to use some um, underglazes on the piece, which is on the left which is called Memories of Big City and kind of illustrates of the narrative of where this uh, creature um, has been and uh, what kind of encounters she has uh, been through. And uh, the one on the right, I used uh, also um, some China painting and um, it's a different technique. It's like um, painting with uh, oiled ink which then had to be fired uh, as well. And um, if you notice, she has like a, a veil on her face, which is kind of uh, creepy because then we, uh, in seven years, we will be living in pandemic. Next slide, please. And then they started slowly to come out of their shells. Um, and you could see um, this one, I call them, this whole series is called window vulnerability because they're still vulnerable, but they're braver. And let's go to the next slide. All right, well, why are there? there we go. Okay, great. And then they completely uh, came out and I call them escapists. So the um, person in the center, she's taking a bath and um, it's called Dreaming Haiku. So uh, what I painted was the China paint on the bass represents what she'd been reading to and how she fell asleep. Um, I feel like we just have to go a little bit quicker. Maybe I, I placed too many slides. Let's go to the next slide. And then they moved to the clouds. So these are my cloud dwellers. And the, the one on the left, she holds the phone and it's kind of like a commentary of how much we are dependent on the social media and how we are glued to our phones and uh, 
the one on the right, she wants to get rid of all this burden and she's letting out and she holds the bird in her hand. Could we go to the next one, please? And then what's the best way to depict the cloud is to uh, make it out of glass. So I started blowing glass in 2019 and combining it with uh, porcelain and stoneware. Um, so these are some uh, examples of this combination. And um, I'm still working uh, with glass will you i'll show you later just doing it slightly differently let's go to the next slide oh no it's not the next one let's i mean can you go one behind yes okay uh and then the, these are just examples of how you could also use the glass as extensions the the one in the center she has the whole cloud on her head and then the ones on the sides, they just have extensions. Let's go to the next one. Yes. So um, during the pandemic, each of us acquired different skills. And um, I started to do some um, breathing exercises, breathing meditation. So the one on the left is actually called waterfall detox from social media buzz. And uh, the body is made out of clouds. So it's completely you just, your mind is so clear and uh, you feel like so light as a cloud. And the one on the right is made during the uh, social unrest uh, regarding the tragedy with uh, George um, Floyd. And um, so this is how I reacted and it's called what's going on. And uh, the one after this would be not this one, but the one the <laughs> right before. Oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, one, you want to back, one, I'll back up one. Yeah. Nope. That's weird. Yeah, this one. Okay. Okay. So I we move to the East Coast. The uh, environment have has completely changed for me. And then I started walk, walking in the forest every day and you see the colors um, started to have more green and then there's some mythical creatures. So this is the installation out of 16 pieces. Uh, it um, has been in, exhibited at the art gallery in um, San Francisco for the invitational show called Four Squared. So each artist had to make four by four works. Um, and this is why it's called four square. Let's go to the next one. So we just move ahead and tell you. Move ahead. That yeah, one? this one. And okay. Yes. And uh, then these uh, mythical forest dwellers, they moved to the tops of the long, long trees. And they started to observe from the horizon um, looking for the better vantage point, and they now perceive the imminent obstacles for um, as a as a tool for a further spiritual growth. So, um, I, I made a bunch of these too. Let's go to the next one, and we all know what happened on the twenty fourth of February. The whole world went upside down and me too. I still have relatives in Kiev. I speak with my cousin every day. Um, and um, so these are my um, war dwellers and um, I call them broken dreams. And um, as you could see, they are now punctured with holes and uh, as if they've been shelled, their faces are not serene anymore. And um, Let's go to the next one. I also started blowing glass right inside them. It's challenging, but it looks uh, pretty amazing, I think. Uh, let's go to the next one. And then I also made uh, a couple of pieces like the one on the right, it's called Listen Europe. 
and it's about um, shared geographic and cultural experience uh, uh, and it speaks about Ukraine position right between the West and Russia and also how many red lines have to be crossed before the West will step up. Uh, well, now it's better and West is uh, providing us uh, Ukraine with more weapons, but I made this sculpture, um, started making it in March. And the other one um, uh, is called Protect Our Skies and you probably heard how many times uh, Ukrainian president was asking to protect the skies of Ukraine. Let's go to the next one. And this is my last slide. And um, all I want is peace and uh, the one is um, on the right and the other one is um, called for my people. Um, I am very hopeful that this war will end soon. It just, I'm 100% I'm sure that we will win. It's just the price that we have to pay is very, very high. So sorry to end on such a gloomy note, but this is what I've been thinking and making lately. No, I'm thanking Tasha. I don't think any, no apologies necessary. I mean, it's in the back of our minds as well, but it certainly can't be as personal as it is as it is for you. Um, I have a quick question about the mythology. Is it Ukrainian specific mythology or? Um, the mythology I've been using is my own because oh. Since, oh. since my early childhood, I've been exposed to so many different mythology right. of uh, Greek and Rome and uh, Ukraine and Georgia. You name it, and and right. Christian Anderson, like we all. So now I feel like uh, I can make up my own mythology. <laughs> Good. But uh, it's always based on something. You know, we don't live in the vacuum, and um, yeah. the work yeah. definitely represents it. And um, uh, I also usually stay away from being political. And um, this time I just, I couldn't, right. this, is, this is too much right. for us. I feel like we live in some kind of a fiction. Like I want to wake up and, and I just want it all disappear. This is, this is not real. This is, cannot be real. Right. This is how I feel. Um, on the other um, note, if anybody is interested where to um, donate money, how to help Ukrainians, you can um, contact or just write to me and I'll give you tons of links. I, I know people have been donating and making different fundraisers and um, I'm participating in the next one soon in the, on the 22nd of um, May in Boston. It's called Boston for Ukraine. And um, the gallery uh, in Exeter, we um, raised um, almost fifteen thousand dollars for, and and then there have been more, and and you know, yeah. everything helps. Yep. So, okay. just want to share with you. Yeah, no, thank you, Tasha. Uh, if, any other questions? Can you? I think we better move on and then make sure we have time for other people and then hold any other questions you may have, which I have one, but I'll hold it for Natasha later, perhaps at the end. So thanks again. And we'll move to Sabrina. Hi there. All right. Um, go on ahead to the next one. My images are in no particular order. Um, I grew up in North Carolina. I went to RISD for textiles, and then I worked in the textile industry for a while in South Carolina, moved back to North Carolina, and then hightailed it to California, lived in Oakland for nine years, and now I've been in Vermont for a dozen years. Throughout the entire time, I have maintained a very active studio practice. Um, this piece is a butterfly. It's about six feet tall. It lives at Brevard Music Center in Brevard, North Carolina. 
Um, it's a piece of spring iron, um, leaf iron from a truck is the base of it. And then it's woven copper panels and set into um, steel, forged steel. Um, next slide. And it's about six feet tall. Uh, okay. um, this piece is called, that was then, this is now. Um, it's 30 feet long and was made on site at Sculpture Fest in Woodstock, Vermont. And it's all aluminum fencing wire and there's no welding or anything. It's all just woven into itself as it happened, as it was made. Your job is to hang out in a meadow all day. Um, next, this it came from Lily Bloom. Um, so this is just three seasons of it in the yard. And I just, I love it with the frost on it when it's cold. I think that really is a better than any patina you could put on it. Um, next slide, please. Oh, and that's about 24 inches tall. Made out of this, this is called ectopic. This, the large blown glass piece is 36 inches long. So it's, it's fairly large piece. Um, it's a piece of industrial cable that I found it was, a hose had a rubber hose inside all that beautiful stainless steel woven stuff. So I took off the ends and I did some glass blowing at Penland and blew the glass and then unbraided and rebraided the wire, the cable around the blown glass forms. So it looks like it's um, growing in the tube, if you will. Um, next slide, please. Oops, sorry. Uh, well, that's not my Sorry, word. there we go. Um, All right. This piece is fairly recent. It's called surrogate praxis um, or alternate use. I found, uh, I go by my local fabricators and scrounge around in their trash every now and then, and they had a huge dumpster full of unfinished wire hangers. And in the light of Roe versus Wade and everything, it's really annoying to have to make work about women's rights. Anyway, the I had to do something with all of these hangers, but I didn't want to be so in your face and make a human figure or things like that. And so I, they're all bound together, as you see in the detail picture on the left with steel wire, and they're all just radiating out from each other. And um, what was most fascinating about this is the shadow play that starts to happen. And I have since ordered little swivels to go between each layer. So each layer can swivel independently from the one above it. And when you rotate it in the shadows, they just do amazing, exciting things. Um, so next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, get to it. There we are. I don't know. Um, this is in a recent show I had at the T. Wood Gallery in Montpelier. This is called Salpenges, and Salpenges is another name for fallopian tubes. You'll see a theme in my work. Um, so these are crocheted steel tie wire, and I found an old basketball hoop in the river out behind my house and I mounted it up high on the wall and used it as a circular knit loom with the wire um, to make these long, long tubes. And if you use a whole three pound roll of tie wire, the tube that you'll knit from that is about 20 feet long, which is kind of fun. So anyway, someday I'll make a whole room of these that you have to negotiate your way through and find your way out. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is the rhododendron. This also lives at Brevard Music Center in Brevard, North Carolina. This is forged in inflated steel. Um, and the circle underneath is six feet in diameter. Give you an idea of scale. Um, yeah, next slide. I'm sure there'll be questions. Um, this is called organic. 
Um, it is pantyhose filled with plastic pellets that you find in Beanie Babies or stuffed toys. And I found this kind of medicalized tray and they just seemed to need to live on top of it. It's a little disturbing. Um, in the gallery, I had a sign encouraging people to touch it because it really is squishy and a little odd, but yet compelling. So I like that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I lost my cursor. There we go. Uh oh. Um, this is called Wildflower. Um, it is six feet tall. This is forged and inflated steel. And um, this will be going to Cape Cod in the next couple of weeks for the outdoor exhibition there, which is exciting. And um, I can explain inflating steel if people are interested. I'm guessing they are. Um, basically, I take two sheets of steel and weld them together with a pipe sticking out one end. And I put the whole form in a large forge I built. And when the whole thing is glowing, nice yellow orange, I have an adapter for my air compressor and I inflate it like a balloon. And it makes these beautiful hollow forms. And so I started playing with more complex geometries. And in this piece, um, there are three-sided forms that start out inverted like a star fruit and then you inflate them and they become these crazy forms. Um, cool. Next slide, please. Um, this is the milkweed pod. This is steel and gold leaf. It is nine and a half feet tall. This is also going to Cape Cod. Um, and I did a smaller piece. I think it's in the slides coming up doing gold leaf on the steel. And I just absolutely fell in love with the combo on that. And so um, the milkweed pod. Next slide, please. This is the dogwood blossom. This lives now at High Point University in High Point, North Carolina. And the center of this is more inflated little steel pods. Um, the center of a dogwood blossom has tons of tiny little blossoms within the center. And then playing with shadows and light, it's really hard to photograph things that way, but um, the dogwood. Next slide, please. And this is the burdock. I do a lot of work from nature, plants, seed pods. I collect rusty bits and seed pods, you know. So this is the burdock. It is about 18 inches across, 14 inches high. There are 108 curly Q little tapers on it. And um, 108 is a number that pops up a lot in my artwork, whether I'm really planning it or not. It's considered a sacred number by many um, groups of peoples. It's the number of beads on the Hindu Mala prayer beads. It makes a complete meditation cycle. So theoretically, you do 108 of something, you've done a complete meditation on that. Um, and sometimes I'm just doing things and then realize I did up made 108 of them and wasn't even counting. So anyway, this was the first piece I did with the steel and gold leaf. And this is going to the Cape Cod Indoor Show. Hi, Sabrina. So, Nine minutes, one minute to go. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. Oh. And see, how's that? Wow. <laughs> How's that? Who's got questions? Perfect. <laughs> questions? Hey, yeah, quick, quick questions we got here, and then we want to make sure Dominic has enough space. Uh, uh, I'd love to ask a question. I, if I, go, go ahead if you want, Natasha. Oh, thank you. Um, I love your work, and uh, it's very inspiring, the, the size of it, the exploded steel, or how do you call it? The, the inflated steel. I try not to explode things in the shop. Yeah, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> you know. I, have a, I have a comment that 108 is also, there is Tai Chi style that there are 108 stands. Yes. I just reminded yes. me. And how do you, how, what, what kind of um, adhesive do you use for the gold leaf to your steel? Is it the um, same? Yeah, I, I, I could go pull it off the shelf in the shop. It's just some toxic adhesive. Um, I have <laughs> found what works best. Um, what I've been doing is using a gold gesso 
and then the adhesive and the gold leaf on top of that in case some of the gold leaf doesn't adhere properly, at least it's gold underneath. Um, but I've, I've been also using gold leaf for my mm -hmm. ceramic pieces and it looks fantastic, but I, I just use the same stuff that they sell, but it's different in your case, is it? No, I don't think it's different. I mean, I just ordered oh. a, a metal container of gold leaf adhesive and mm -hmm. Oh, it looks fantastic. And congratulations on all of your pieces being at the Cape Museum. Cape I'm Coast very Museum. excited, very excited about that show coming up. Yeah. Fantastic. Are you driving there? And I was going to ask you another question. Where in Vermont are you living? I'm in central Vermont. I'm in Barrie, just outside Montpelier. And yes, I will be driving everything down to the Cape. And... Uh, how far is it from Stowe? Oh, I'm... I'm maybe 40 minutes from Stowe. Okay, I'll visit you in August. How about that? Oh, that'd be fabulous. That would be okay. amazing. Yes, yes. Come for a studio visit. That'd be great. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Sounds great. But for, for now, we better make on, make sure we're fair yep. to Dominique. So uh, let me find my cursor again. Where am I? Uh, just give me a second. Sorry. Okay. And. Dominique Esposito, you're on. Well, thank you. Thanks. It's an honor being here. I, I think I'm, I'm probably one of the newest members. I've only joined, I think, seven or eight year, months ago. So very, very new. Well, I think all, um, all of you were within the last 15 or so. So it's good. Great. Oh, OK. That's great. Yeah, so I'm um, an artist living basically in my studios in Westwood, Massachusetts, which is just outside of Boston, um, primarily a sculptor. I do a started painting, um, oil painting a couple of years ago. And um, I'll show you some of my work where I combine the paintings with the, with the sculpture. Um, I've been an artist not that long in the grand scheme of things, only about six years or so. And uh, I should say I'm also an activist and I'll talk a little bit about the artwork that I do as an activist, but not necessarily get into all of my the nonprofit or anything else that I do there. So I'm my presentation is a little bit different. I'm going to try and go through a little bit of the sort of explain some of the process that I do, um, which I thought might be interesting. Um, and uh, and so I'll talk about three particular points is combining 2D and 3D art, mold making um, with clothing. And I'll show you how I how I how I do that. And then uh, large pattern making for uh, of wood uh, for eventually sand casting um, in aluminum. So. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so yeah, so I'll, you know, so basically this is one of my pieces here and I'll talk about, you know, as I said, I just said combining 2D and 3D art, mold making clothing, and then um, pattern making of the opioid spoon. So, sorry, next, next slide. So this is a, a show just again, to give you a sense of like some of the work and, you know, how it looks all together, I um, actually held a Nessa workshop here and we had four people come during a snowstorm, which was pretty <laughs> incredible. Um, but uh, the show went on during the month of January of this past January is at the Piano Craft Gallery and I had 35 pieces there. Um, it was um, it was a combination of both, all of my oil paint, a lot of my oil painting, a lot of my uh, sculptures. And um, during, uh, it was, COVID had just happened, uh, just reignited. So it was, it was also a tough month to, to host a show in Boston, but it did lead to, um, we we're in the, the show was in the Boston Globe, which was, which was a nice treat. And then I was just featured in um, Chronicle as well for my activism and in particular, some of the pieces that were at the show. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those. Next slide, please. Okay, so, uh, these are um, two of kind of more of my iconic type pieces. So you can see there's a there's this hoodie sculpture, and the sculpture is life size um, in bronze, and it uh, is attached to a wood panel. Um, and the wood panel is basically a gesso board that I buy it at uh, Blick. It's two inches, and it's got quite a bit of um, reinforcement in it. So it's got two by fours and things like that to sort of 
really make sure that the, the sculpture will hold because that's a that's a bronze sculpture. So the sculpture alone probably weighs close to 60 to 70 pounds. So uh, and then I use kind of tapped bolts to kind of get the sculpture through onto the onto the um, two by fours. And then the whole thing sits on a wall uh, using uh, a French cleat or sometimes we actually I end up actually hanging them um, from rafters as well. Uh, so th these one of the pieces is called there is feeling vertigree. So a lot of my pieces tend to be charged. It's all about kind of isolation and loneliness and sort of um, mental health and in, in, the, in the new epidemic that's sort of happening to uh, a lot of people. Um, the other piece is called assailable. And again, um, I work with different uh, uh, with bronze and I use different kind of patinas and colors to sort of uh, reflect on the messaging that comes with each piece. So next slide, please. Okay, so this is, um, I thought I would kind of explain a little bit how I actually make um, the sculpture. And so it is, a, as you know, uh, everyone here's a sculpture, so I'm kind of speaking to the choir, but uh, it is a very extremely time consuming process. And you, you basically, I start with a source photo um, and the person who's in the, in the um, photo to the bottom left is actually my daughter and you can see like you can see that's a real person in there so I take you know hundreds of photos of her in different stances and that's basically what I try to pick up in the source photo is you know how the shoulders are coming in through and piercing and then the head and kind of creases that happen on the clothing then I create a um, my own mannequin so it's only it's a half mannequin because it's you know basically made out of foam I use rolled up paper um, a lot of wire in there as well and then duct tape to hold the you know to hold that together and shaping with foam could be is very um it's not the best material to be shaping into a mannequin but it, it, it it's kind of quick work and you can use you know can scratch and rasp it and to kind of get it into the shape that you want to make a torso and then I actually use the, the real sweatshirt that she was wearing um and pin it onto my mannequin that I make and uh with gallons and gallons of starch, get the clothing to stiffen and then polyurethane on top of that. Um, and then spray the whole thing with basically a, a release agent. So that make sure that the rubber mold um, comes, the silicone rubber comes off of the, um, of the clothing so it doesn't stick. Um, what's important in this whole process as well is to make sure that this clothing is, is really is stiff so that when you pour the rubber on, it doesn't kind of sink in. And then you have to fill in any of the undercuts with clay. So sometimes you get undercuts that are um, pretty extreme. So um, those get filled with clay. If you go to the next slide, you can see some of the um, silicon rubber uh, mold. And uh, so it's, it's basically five layers of uh, silicon rubber, you know, very thin layers, especially that, that first coat. Um, pay attention to bubbles, pay attention to, and you can see how the clothing in the arm, all those ripples, make sure that, you know, all that silicone rubber um, gets in there. The, mo the mother mold then is made of, instead of plaster, because it would be so heavy, uh, use um, plasti paste or some sort of resin, and it just makes it a lot lighter and uh, manageable. This is a, a four-part mold. Um, and... Um, that's it. So maybe we can hold questions at the begin at the end, um, but we can keep going. So this is my my activism. Um, so this is one of my sculptures. It's um, it says FDA on it, and this was in front of the Health and Human Services Building back in early, oh, sorry, mid two thousand nineteen. Um, and that's what I do. I'm an I'm an activist for the opioid uh, crisis. It's something I started four years ago, and that's where I've gotten a lot of. Um, a lot of press um, is mostly around my activism, um, and uh, it's a, it's a personal story for me that having do mostly with my brother who's been through this uh, substance use disorder for the last twelve years. And um, so, what I'm going to talk about is basically uh, how I make this 800 pound, 10 foot uh, solid aluminum opioid spoon, right? and how I make multiples of them as well. So next slide, please. Yeah, so 
you can see here, this is uh, what's called the, the pattern. So the pattern is, you know, is basically the negative that gets sand cast. And the first step in making uh, uh, the, the pattern is really, um, is coming up with the, the model of what you want to make. And so what I did is I took a, a, a real uh, household spoon, right, and bent it into the shape that I wanted it and then had that 3D scanned. So, um, you know, there's places that'll do that for you. And uh, that 3D scan then gets placed in, in, in some sort of CAD or whatever um, program you want to use. And, and that gets divided into sections. And those sections are what gets cast, right? So the first time we made this, we did it in nine sections. So this is, um, this is nine all minutes, put together. Nine to go. Nine minutes, okay. So this is it all put together. And if you go to the next um, slide and you can see some of the, um, so you can see we, what I start off is taking these big blocks of uh, cedar wood um, that all get their boards of cedar get all glued together. We use a four access uh, CNC router uh, that basically carves out each um, section. And um, we've also started now, uh, I've started casting them into three sections. I found a foundry that's an industrial foundry in Marlboro, Massachusetts. So it's Marlboro Foundry and they're able to cast them in three sections. So, and then the whole thing gets welded and um, next slide. And that's the last, well, there's, Basically, it gets cast. It's, it's and then it gets cleaned. All of the uh, all of the um, welds get cleaned up. And it's ground. Um, next slide, please. Uh, a lot of my work. You can see the rest of it on um, on my uh, website. And I will. If you go to the next slide, you'll see uh, that I have um, a couple of sh I have some show coming up in Boston at the Beacon Gallery. That's opens June 3rd and I'll have six or seven pieces there. So I welcome you to come in. It's a group show and I'm really excited about. And then this is the first time I'm participating in the new Canaan Land Trust Sculpture Trail. Um, I asked earlier if anybody had been through it, but uh, there's 10 sculpt sculptors there and I'm doing a big, large floating stainless steel Tory gate um, for that um, exhibition. So um, uh, anyways, that's it. And um, maybe we can open it up to questions if anybody has any on the process. Sorry, I went really quickly through the process, but. No, it's good to get a sense. Thank you very much. Let me let me uh, finish, thanks, thanks so much. Uh, let me stop sharing and maybe round of applause for all four, please. <laughs> you can un unmute yourselves if, um, if we can all make noise together here again. Um, questions, general, specific. Dominic, I put a couple of things in the comment section. One is there's a product called Stiffy that's a wonderful fabric stiffener. It's it's amazing oh, stuff. Um, stiffy, okay. Stiffy. And yeah, I use uh, kind of like, it's almost like an industrial uh, starch and I am able to find it, gallons of it, but- um, Awesome. It might be the same, is it in a blue? I think it's the same stuff I use. It's like in a blue- could be um, very gallon much jug. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a big tub of goo, and yeah, I also yeah. it's really a, thick. Yeah, I also put there's a wonderful book I'm reading called Artist Social Practice. Um, I okay. put the info on that in the chat too. You might be interested in that. Okay. Thank you. I I have one. I have just one comment. I was really true. You know, yeah. There's the oh, this is all very lovely. I was really truly impressed by the range of, of just quality of art, quality of artistry, the quality of sentiment, the quality of vision, the quality of commitment to making things happen, to, to exploring different techniques and things to, to bring who you are and what, and what you are offering to, to life for the rest of us to go experience. This has been truly a very meaningful time with me. So thank you for being here, for those of you who presented. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I agree, thank you so much, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? By the way, one quick thing. I think Maddie ordered this too. It arrived from Finland. It claims to be oily glue and it's supposed to be way beyond CAA glue. So we'll shall see. Oily glue. <laughs>
supposedly will stick anything to anything, but importantly, not skin. So all of us who all of us who've super glued our fingers together and can't find the can of acetone, this might be the answer. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and, and and speaking of that, you know, Dominic's stuff is about the social side of stuff, and, and Natasha's also is very much about the humanity side of things. Absolutely. And Ro, I was noticing on yours, and one of the comments that I wanted to make was you have the the glue thing brought it up. All of those pieces, all of that mathematics, all of those 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 non-human things that you connect up with each other. The one thing that they have all in common and they keep bringing home is the notion of connection. How do yeah. all of those pieces connect into something that is shared and creates a, 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 a some kind of group experience by having all those pieces together and all of your attention to bringing them finding ways to get at them finding a way to make that connection and dominic you know what, what do you say about your work i mean there's there's the quality of the work and all the the, the artistry of it but the messaging the caring behind it and the caring that it designed designed to create thank you thank you yeah Thanks, Brian. Yeah, that's okay. So I think to tell your friends, um, we slowly gaining a constituency here. I think these, I think these are, you know, wonderful occasions for a lot of us to learn a lot that we didn't know. And was, as well as just the semi-humanity of us on at least Zoom, you know, seeing each other face to face. So um, anything else? Sabrina, thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so uh, much. Thank, thank you. See you next month. Can you ask me something? Derek. Sure, go ahead. You were going to ask well, I don't me know. I, I guess some of your, a, a lot of your stuff looked like porcelain to me, but only some of it was porcelain. And I thought, how do you make stoneware look like porcelain? But you can tell me privately if you want. So okay. anyway, but no, I, 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 this is a wonderful, diverse, you know, mixture of things, all really highly accomplished. So I'm, I'm really glad to have been here. So thank you all. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Is mm -hmm. you going to sing us out or stop recording or something? Yeah. Okay. So watch, watch for the fact that this is going to be on YouTube. We're going to have it. We're going to get that out also. That's great. Yeah. Okay.